Good morning. Welcome to WGN TV Political Report. I'm Paul Lisnick. We begin this morning at City Hall. We're just a few, oh, just a week from now, members of Chicago City Council will start carving out new ward boundaries for themselves. The process, usually pretty cutthroat, aldermen who step out of line from those in power can be cut out of their own wards and communities divided up among multiple representatives. Advocates are pushing aldermen to do what the state legislature wouldn't. Let somebody else draw the maps. But council members argue they're closer to the neighborhoods than anybody else, making them uniquely qualified to do that job. Even Mayor Lori Lightfoot has backed off previous promises she made to make the process more independent. This year, though, there's more at stake than just empowering incumbents. The fight is shaping up to center around race with a growing population. The council's Latino caucus is signaling they'll block any new map that doesn't reflect their community and the political power they deserve. Alderman Gilbert Villegas it represents the city's 36th ward that covers part of the northwest side, including Portage Park, Belmont Cragen. He's also the foundation chairman of the city council's Latino caucus. Alderman, good to see you again. It's been a while. Good to see you too, Paul. So let me ask you, um, in your role as uh, you know, Latino Caucus Chairman, you said that um, you'll be calling for boundaries to the 50 wards that reflect your words, the Population Data and the Voting Rights Act. Now, the mapping starts this week on the 26th, but you won't get that data from the census until mid-August. So what data are you using now to inform this effort? Yeah, so basically we're, we're using what's called the ACS data, and that's the uh, estimate of the uh, census figures that we're going to get and it's maybe two or three percent off so as it as there as it relates to the, the details uh really by street level uh that's what we're gonna have to wait until mid-august early september uh to get the, the full census data but we're pretty confident with the acs it'll at least give us a framework as to how we think the city should be uh divided up and fairly represented uh again at the center at the center of our principles are making sure that we're following the data and making sure that everyone's voice is heard all right, by the way, I'm going to correct myself, you're chairman of the foundation, so I want to get that, uh, get that clear. Um, currently, there's 13 majority Latino wards. So what are you aiming for? Where do you think it all goes in the next round? Well, uh, I, I think based on the data, what we're seeing from ACS, I mean, there is the opportunity to pick up some additional seats. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that the data is uh, taken into, really taken into consideration uh, and making sure that we're listening to folks across the city of Chicago so that we, as the, as the wards are uh, reapportioned uh, as required by le required by law every 10 years. Uh, we want to make sure that there's a, a good reflection of the, of the city's population. And of course, you're not the only one who wants that. Obviously, aldermen like Jason Irvin want to make sure that the majority black wards are, are preserved for them. Currently, there are 18 majority African-American wards. So uh, do you have a sense that in the battle for Latino wards that the African-American community keeps theirs? How does it all juggle out? Well, I, I know, uh, again, not really knowing all the data as it relates to um, the census. Uh, right now, I'm only focused on making sure that uh, the data is, is really taken into consideration with the reapportioning of the wards. Um, and what we want to do is make sure that there's some parity as it relates to the uh, aldermanic offices. As, as you know, when you have aldermen sort of working over these maps, all sorts of things can happen. I want to talk about some of those things that happen. And one of those things that does is that awards sometimes get divvied up between two, three, four, five different aldermen. Will you be making an effort with your colleagues to keep neighborhoods together so it's not split up for other purposes? Right. And, I, I, and that's something that I've heard. Um, me being a bit, my, the 36th ward um, really being uh, uh, crafted from the last legislature, uh, last. Uh, uh, redistricting um, some of the some of the neighborhoods uh, were, were divided up now we would love to see a, a, the, the ability to have some um, some neighborhoods stay intact I think it's I think it uh, makes it makes for a better opportunity and, and, and advocating however sometimes uh, with multiple aldermen you know maybe two or three aldermen it allows for a community to advocate even more for resources so it just depends but I think what I've heard from my constituents uh, on the northwest side of the city is that they'd like to see no more than two aldermen uh, representing a community. Uh, so that, that at least a goal. There's been a shift of uh, responsibility, or a push to shift responsibility to an independent commission. I know a lot of all aldermen say, look, nobody knows the wards like we do. We'll do better than the independent uh, groups. Do you agree? Well, no, I, I agree that, that the aldermen do know uh, the neighborhoods and their constituents better. Um, you know, this is a legislative function that's been in place uh, for for quite some time, since the 1940s. And um, we've done a really good job at making sure 
that um, uh, you know the, the wards are drawn equally uh, in accordance with the law uh, and also in accordance with the Voting Rights Act. So I feel confident that once again, um, we will uh, ensure that the, uh, the voices of Chicago are fairly represented in the uh, aldermanic redistricting uh, and also making sure that we're following the law. And of course, one of the concerns are that when uh, politicians draw the maps and you don't have independent people doing it, interesting things can happen. I know you remember that old, uh, excuse me, Alderman Bob Fioretti literally got drawn out of his ward uh, and there was no ward for him uh, when things went on. And I can remember 10 years ago that even in the 32nd ward, Scott Wagaspak, I was looking at a map with him and he showed me how I think he wasn't necessarily a, a you know, the Ram Emanuel wasn't a big fan of his. And there's various lines going down alleys that would sort of sidestep actual houses that were on either line. Those kinds of shenanigans get played when you're playing politics. Yeah, and, and I think I think that um, this is uh, I was not here for the last redistricting, so I can tell you that I'm going to be advocating uh, to have um, uh, more succinct, more uh, communities intact. I think it's important. I think, you know, the city of Chicago is a, is a uh, in, in, is formed in a grid uh, like system. So I think it's more advantageous for us to to draw these uh, uh, these wards a lot more continuous, but we also have to make sure that we're following the data as well as the Voting Rights Act, and that's what leads sometimes to some uh, gerrymandering, uh, is because we have to make sure that we're trying to capture as many uh, minority wards as possible per the Voting Rights Act. So what can you do? I mean, again, having what I, what I said about, you know, wanting an independent voice and all that, would there not be a way of having this process start with independent voices, let the aldermen uh, play a role, but how do you keep the political hijinks out? How do you keep the aldermen that maybe might not be a favorite of the mayor or something like that, a hypothetical concept, but how do you keep them from them, you know, having happened to them what happened to, say, Bob Fioretti? Well, I can tell you that um, I can't say what all the other aldermen are doing, but I can tell you that the Latino caucus has already begun uh, meeting with uh, community organizations that represent uh, the, the Latino community. Uh, and so we're listening to what it is that, that they would like to see as it relates to uh, representation. And so we're doing our part in working with you know, non-political uh, entities to ensure that there's a fair uh, and equitable map that represents the voices of Chicago. Now, you know, this, this is not a majority vote. You need more than that. And in fact, if 10 aldermen don't support this map, it actually, the public gets involved and it turns into a referendum. Can you explain a little bit about how that would work? And do you have any thought that that actually could happen? Well, I think, it, uh, well, I know for a fact this occurred in the 90s. And I think that um, aldermen uh, would, would, wouldn't want to go down that path again. So there's going to be an appetite to have a lot of uh, discussions uh, and making sure that we're listening and trying to work with one another. Uh, that is accurate that any 10 aldermen can propose a map um, and, uh, and then the city councils would have to uh, agree to, to pass it. So, you know, you need a simple majority right now, 26. However, 10 aldermen uh, could get together and, and propose a different map. So that's obviously we don't want to go there again uh, because um, uh, this happened in the 90s. And I think that um, given the, the relationships that are currently in place in city council, uh, I feel confident that we can get there. Um, obviously, even if once there is a map, there still will be lawsuits. Do you anticipate there would be? Well, here, listen, every, anyone can sue. Um, so what we want to do is, again, is making sure that uh, the data that's provided, uh, that's our guiding principle and, uh, and our North Star, and then and just ensuring that the Voting Rights Act is uh, also front and center. I think I think if we we do those two things, um, we we run the risk of not being sued, and so that's where uh, we're going to be focused on as the Latino Caucus, uh, and that's and that's what um, uh, that's what we've said in our press conference or our press release rather is that we want to stay with those two principles. While I have you, let me just turn to uh, the mayor's meeting with some tech uh, honchos out in San Francisco uh, this past week. Um, obviously, you have concerns about wanting Latino representation in the growing contracting in that area. Have you had any productive conversations with the mayor? Where do we stand after her meetings? Yeah, well, I can tell you that this is something that I've been championing uh, for, for, for the last two years. Uh, I, I, besides being the chairman of the Latino caucus, uh, I'm also the chairman of the Economic Capital Technology Committee, and I can tell you that um, based on the, uh, the technology industry, I think that's probably one of the fastest ways for us to grow population in the city of Chicago. Illinois produces the second most engineers, however, however they're going to the coast, and I think what the mayor did was tr try to go to the coast, uh, to the west coast, to say, hey, listen, remember, you're from Chicago, 
come back to Chicago because we're really making efforts to invest in technology. Um, as it relates to technology within city government, that's something that I'm pushing as well. Uh, we have some outdated um, IT services and uh, the Gartner uh, Corporation just did a report and analysis of the city's IT. And we can tell you that uh, 42 42% of our systems are, are failing. 32% of our workforce is underskilled in IT. And I think that if we want to lead in tech, we need to do yep. it uh, in, our, in our own house first. All right, a lot of work ahead of us then on that issue. We'll watch that with you. Alderman Gilbert Villegas of the 36th Ward, thank you so much for your time today. We'll talk to you again soon. Appreciate you. Thank you, Paul.